today it's time for a book haul. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Adrian and today we are doing a book haul, which is not something I do super regularly on this channel, mainly because a large percentage of the books I read are either on audio or actually I read them on my Kindle. So it is a very rare occurrence for me to do a book haul, but I did pick up a few of these books very cheap and could not say no, cheaper than they would have been if I picked them up on Kindle. Uh, so yeah, absolutely worth having a look at what I picked up. So let's jump straight in. These first four books I got online, second hand um, they all came to a total of about six or seven quid total which is not bad at all for four books so let's see what I've got first couple of these are books that I have read before on Kindle and I absolutely loved and I felt I really wanted a physical edition of these so this is um, Shadow and Betrayal and Seasons of War these are the two book bind ups of at Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abraham. I know lots of you guys in the US and elsewhere have got four book bind up of the whole quartet. Here in the UK it's much easier to get these two book bind ups of the first two and then the second two. So Shadow and Betrayal is Shadow in Summer and Betrayal in Winter and then Seasons of War is an Autumn War followed by The Price of Spring. Um, as many of you will know I absolutely adore this series. Daniel Abraham became a favourite author immediately on completion of the series it is just so well done it is an amazing set of books with very little page time the whole thing is basically the length of a Stormlight Archive book and that's for all four books together and they tell a wonderful and complete story over 70 years of some of our characters lives and it's just done so so incredibly well I cannot recommend it to you enough I have read these obviously but I wanted physical copies because I love this so so much next in that online order I also picked up Legend by David Gemmell. Now, this is a book I do not know too much about, apart from it's not that thick, which is nice for a fantasy book. As well as that, I have never actually read David Gemmell before. I have, however, heard him talked about a lot by John Gwynn. Now, a lot of you all know that I really love John Gwynn. The Banished Lands is an absolutely wonderful series. The Faithful and the Fallen was one of my favourite series. I really, really adore it. I've even gone and bought the special edition from The Broken Binding when they appear. I also have loved Shadow of the Gods. It is just a wonderful start to a series, and I cannot wait for The Hunger of the Gods that is coming out in 2022. It is going to be amazing. But John Gwynn cites David Gemmell as one of his favourite fantasy authors, as one of his inspirations for writing The Faithful and the Fallen, and as such that is a recommendation that I cannot let go without trying some David Gemmell. So the only things I really know about Legend are what I have read from the back cover, and what I have managed to pick up from listening to Sarah Reed's her review of this from a couple of months ago. It sounds super interesting, it's something I definitely want to get to soon, but with such a high recommendation from one of my favourite authors, it was hard to pass up for a couple of pounds. And then the last book that I picked up in this order was The Gunslinger by Stephen King. As I've mentioned in a previous video, I've never read any Stephen King before, which makes me a terrible reader, I'm sure, but I am super excited to jump into the Dark Tower series. I'm not a massive horror reader, so there are not other Stephen King books that are, appeal to me massively. However, The Dark Tower does appeal to me. I do like the sound of it. Hearing Michael Nip talk about The Gunslinger absolutely encouraged me to pick this up. And so those four books together came in at like seven pounds or something, which is just too good a value to look past. The next book I got is a new release. This is from Daniel Green and is Rebels Creed. As you can see here, really nice cover. Um, I really was excited and enjoyed reading Breach of Peace when that came out. And as you will see from my bookmark, I am currently nearly halfway through Rebels Creed and I am enjoying it quite a lot. It is definitely a follow-up to Breach of Peace. You definitely need to have read Breach of Peace to really get what's going on and to understand what is happening, but I am really enjoying it. It is something I found I needed to get to relatively soon after release, as I know a lot of people are interested in Daniel Green attempting to become a writer and his authorial style, and particularly with how much I enjoyed Breach of Peace, I gave it four stars. I really wanted to jump straight into Rebel's Creed. This is also a particular book that I'm interested in because of its setting. It definitely has flintlock 
vibes. It definitely has that kind of more industrial fantasy feel, which is not something we get super regularly. I know there are flint flock fantasy books out there, and I know that Alan and Angela are really trying to find as many of them as possible, but Rebel's Creed and Richard Peace definitely fit into that category and definitely worth reading if you are into fantasy with guns, that kind of flintlock industrial aesthetic. It could be something that you really enjoy as well. And then the final two books in this haul are books that I picked up from local charity shops and they are books that I have been interested in for a while but I definitely wanted to pick up when I saw them. The first one of those is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. I have never read any Jemison. I've been putting off getting to the Broken Earth trilogy for far, far, far too long but I saw it for a couple of pounds in a charity shop and thought there's no way I can't pick this up as a relatively new release it was something that for a couple of quid had to be bought and go on my shelf ready for when I do finally get to the Broken Earth trilogy. From what I know of the Broken Earth trilogy, it is a very dystopian, dark fantasy series, particularly uh, interesting with its narration. I know there is one perspective that we are given in second person, which is slightly odd but very interesting i've heard that people think it's done very well which is interesting for second person so i really want to give that a go and see how i find it and whether the payoff for that is worth the slightly odd reading experience and the last book i also picked up from a local charity shop for one pound is Isabel by Guy Gabriel Kay. Now this isn't top of my list for what I want to read from Guy Gabriel Kay. there are definitely other Guy Gabriel Kay books that i'm more interested in reading but having read The Lions of Arasan and having read Tagana and absolutely adoring Guy Gabriel Kay's style, his prose, his work with themes, I knew I just had to pick it up. It had his name on it. It's a more urban fantasy. And by that, I don't mean like cities, but I mean in our world. As far as I can tell, it's set in France um, with an American protagonist or one of the main characters being American. So a very interesting departure from um, Guy Gabriel Kay's more secondary world fantasy that we see in a lot of his works. It is from 2008, the winner of the 2008 World Fantasy Awards for Best Novel, apparently, according to the back anyway. Um, and so I've picked up two award winners from local charity shops, the Hugo Award for the fifth season, the World Fantasy Award um, for Isabel, and I picked both of these up for a combined three pounds. Now, I, like I said, I don't read many books physically. I read a lot on Kindle, I read a lot on audio, but Charity shops in the UK are absolute gold mines for picking up fantasy books that you have been waiting to read for a long time. And I've really enjoyed having a little browse and pulling out things that I'm like, that is something I will definitely read in the future. Let me know which of these books you guys have read, which ones you think I should get to sooner than others. I know The Gunslinger is on my TBR for November, so I will definitely be getting to that, as I will with Rebel's Creed as well. But let me know of the others what you think should go high on my priority list and what I should be putting off for a little while, maybe if you didn't love it so much. And hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.